Hi, everybody. It's good to be able to be with you today. And we're looking one more time in Genesis 17, where we covered last week. And we want to pull one more gem out that's blessed us that you can see uh, with me in Genesis 17, verses 15 through 17. Let's just pray together as we look at this. Lord God, I thank you for this opportunity to be with everyone that is uh, with us today, Lord. You're an amazing covenant-keeping God. You're an amazing God in all of your ways, and they're past finding out. And just open your word and bless us in this short little time of worship together. Amen. Genesis 17, 15 through 17, we read, And God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall become many nations. Kings of people shall come from her. Then Abram fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Shall a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Shall Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? When God speaks, change comes. And often change, as with Abram and, Abram and Sarah, is almost hard to even understand or explain. And often even we can react. But all God needs to do is speak and change will happen. He speaks here. God said to Abraham, if you notice, and then he brings Sarah into it. He says, Sarah, your wife's name is going to be changed. You know, I like to think uh, for disciples of, of God, Jesus' disciples, uh, we might have been called all kinds of stuff before, like the Apostle Paul was a persecutor of the church. Uh, Mary Magdalene would have had a very shady background. Uh, Rahab the harlot. It just keeps on going. But when God speaks, things change. We become a new creature in Christ Jesus. We get a new name, a name as a Christian. I believe it says in Acts one time that the disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. But God here is speaking to Abram, and Abraham now is going to go. Now he's beginning to call him Abraham, and he's telling Abraham things are really going to change. I'm going to bless Sarah. I'm going to reach out to your wife and bless her tremendously. And for just a moment, men, and you sisters too, I want you to realize that wherever you're at in your ministry, you are blessing people. I think of all you moms, we just had Mother's Day, the ways that you're blessing your husband. I know I am a recipient of that blessing from my mother, from my wife, from many other godly women who have never ceased to pray for us in many places and encourage and have a good word. But here, Abraham, Abraham said, uh, heard, heard God saying to, to him, you're going to be blessed through your wife. You know, sometimes I think, well, yeah, I'm going to be blessed, but I'll be the hands and feet of blessing. But God is saying, hold it, I'm going to bless her. And on top of that, one of the blessings is going to be, I'm going to give her a son that's going to bear the seed that's going to be the instrument of my blessing through throughout the ages, many generations out of this one woman, Sarah, will come one little seed that will just multiply and multiply and multiply. And God says, she'll become many nations. I love that because I believe that was even prophetic, that it would cross over all the boundaries of Israel and Jewish lineage. And as Jesus came, he came for everyone out of every kindred and tongue and tribe. And he says, she will become many nations. And I believe here we see God seeing here spiritual seed coming out of Sarah to bless so many. And when God begins to bless, get ready to be blown away. It's just amazing the ways he'll do it. He says, kings of people shall come after her. She will be blessed in such a way that she'll be touching the hearts of kings. And throughout the ages, it's amazing from palaces to pulpits to uh, the prisons of the world, people have been blessed in the craziest, most supernatural ways. And God was speaking here. But notice what happened. This was such a great word 
that it brought a crazy response from Abraham. The Word of God says that Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself. Notice before in this chapter, he fell on his face when he heard that God was going to bless him. But now he reaches out to his wife and Abraham now deals with a little bit of unbelief. I'm not going to say it's because of his wife, but it was definitely because the blessing would be so abundant and overflowing that he's saying, Abraham, you will not even get what it could be. I want us to think of something. Every little deed that is done to the glory of God, remember, might multiply far beyond what you ever see. This is what happened to Sarah. All she did was was believe and bear a son. God just kept doing the blessing. Generation after generation could rise up and call him blessed. He makes the impossible possible everywhere he does. He opens doors that no one can shut. He makes his own kingdom up that we are part of today called the Church of Christ in the world that we live in. I'm going to leave you a verse in Philippians 1 and 6. And this is a beautiful passage that just resonated with me throughout the ages when Paul said, And I am sure of this, that he who began a good work in you will bring it to completion at the day of Jesus Christ. And I think what he's saying is what God started, he can finish. Don't give up on that. Whether it's prayers, whether it's your children, whether it's walking by faith, know that God is a blessing God that as with Sarah, he can multiply that so many times and God will be glorified. And the question for you and I today is, can we hear the voice of God and believe what he says as big and as crazy as it might say, but he will definitely just tell us, believe, and then follow me. God bless you all.